Hi, this is Chris with Laughter on Water, and today we're looking at indicator lights, power, and some standards for the Magic Jack Plus. We'll be comparing the Magic Jack Plus 2014 to its predecessor, the Magic Jack Plus 2012. This is a short video, so let's begin. For starters, when I plug the 2014 into the kilowatt EZ, it shows me that the device draws about one-tenth of an amp continuous. When I plug the 2012 into the kilowatt EZ, the older device draws about the same number of amps. Next, I looked at voltage. When I measure directly from the 2014 power supply, I get a measurement of about 5.23 volts available to the Magic Jack. When I measure the two USB ports on the Magic Jack itself, the voltage is just at about 5 volts. For the 2012, volts measure just over 5 volts at 5.04. Next, I used my Gardner Bender line tester to check the polarity of the phone jack. Ideally, the polarity tester should give a green light. The Magic Jack 2014 does not pass the polarity test and instead gives a red light. The Magic Jack 12 does pass, as seen with this green light. Next, let's look at the indicator lights. When we first plug in the 2014, we get a continuous blue light, followed by a continuous green light for about 10 seconds. Then the green light starts blinking on and off in a two-second cycle. About five seconds after you plug in the Ethernet cable, the red light will glow for a few seconds and then blink in a similar two-second cycle. When your device is working correctly, you should see a continuous blue light with red and green lights chasing on and off, as shown here. When you plug in the phone jack, indicator lights don't change in any noticeable way. The blinking green light suggests your device is ready for use. The blinking red light suggests your device is properly connected to Magic Jack SIP servers. The 2012 has a single plus-shaped light port. When first powered up, the blue light remains continuous. In about five seconds, a white light slightly below the blue light will begin blinking in a two-second cycle. Nothing changes on the 2012 when you connect the Ethernet cable, and the same is true with the phone cable. When you see a continuous blue light with a white light blinking from within the same light port, the Magic Jack 2012 is functioning normally. While most modern phones have built-in diode bridges to prevent problems with line polarity, the Magic Jack Plus 2014 does not pass the accepted polarity standard that has been a part of the phone services for almost as long as phones have been in business. I doubt this was intentional because anyone who might use the device for non-Magic Jack purposes on a system that needs the accepted polarity standards would merely create a cheap polarity reversal cable between the phone and the device, circumventing the design flaw. I can only assume the flaw is unintentional. Please post your thoughts in the comments. Was it intentional, or is there some proprietary reason why they might have flouted 130 some odd years of polarity standards? We still have yet to see how the USB ports and the SDIO port will be used. Previous chats with Magic Jack chat support suggest a future firmware update will give the device access to these ports. It's possible it could use an off-the-shelf SDIO card like the one from Spectec. Unfortunately, this is a mini SDIO card. There are no micro SDIO cards available in the marketplace as of this posting, but who knows, a device that fits may be just around the corner. The USB ports may be for use with USB phones. I've tried two old USB phones that work with Skype, MSN, and Yahoo Messenger, and many SIP soft phone apps. But the Magic Jack Plus 2014 currently doesn't recognize any of these. Let me know if you find one that works with yours. In a previous post on the MJ Check website, I showed how the Magic Jack Plus 2014 costs about 61 cents more per year to run than the Magic Jack Plus 2012. Perhaps this is because more power may be needed to run the peripherals from the Magic Jack Plus 2014. That's all that can be said of the Magic Jack Plus 2014 in comparison to the 2012 with regards to power, standards, and indicator lights. I hope this has been useful and educational. If so, please subscribe. If you haven't already, please watch some of my other videos and visit my websites listed in the show notes. This is Chris with Laughter on Water. Thanks for watching.